For the last few years, Mazda has been fighting above its weight class. It outpunches things like Hondas, Subarus, Toyotas, and Nissans. But does it have what it takes to take on a full-fledged luxury car? Today we're going to find out. So today we're going to put up this Mazda 6 against the BMW 5 Series, a true luxury car, and see how it stacks up. And we're going to assess things that the luxury cars do to differentiate themselves from their economy counterparts. Ride and drive, exterior design, interior design, build materials and features. So let's hop behind the wheel of this 5 Series and see where the bar is set. The BMW 5 Series has been a statement of luxury for decades, so we're going to see just what makes it so good. In a luxury car like this, ride quality trumps almost anything else. It's about comfort, it's about smoothness, it's about ease of use. And starting with that, we have to talk about this powertrain because it's a turbocharged 2 liter 4 cylinder. Uh, it's got about 248 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque and it's fine. It's not jumpy, it's very smooth. The delivery comes on extremely, you know, predictable. It's a really nice and comfortable powertrain. It doesn't feel underpowered by any means. If you need to rip it up, then go up to a 540 with a V6, straight six. But this four cylinder is just fine. Power comes on nice and smooth. Gear changes can be a little bit abrupt at lower speeds into second gear, but suspension is extremely comfortable. You have a bunch of different drive modes. You can amp things up into sport if you want. You can tone things back into eco mode. You also have adaptive dampers to control how the car behaves in corners and how it soaks up the bumps. This car used to be very sport oriented and now it kind of feels like it's changing and preferring to be more luxury than sport. Now jumping behind the wheel of the Mazda, this has to be all that same stuff that the BMW is. It has to be smooth, it has to be refined, and it has to be luxurious. And I will say that the ride quality in this Mazda is impeccable. It really transcends its segment and is definitely encroaching into the more luxury segment. The steering is a really, really nice feel. There's a good weight to it. It's a nice substantial feeling to it. Uh, the powertrain is really smooth. Power comes on with the addition of that turbo. It's not incredibly jolty or overly aggressive. It's just a good pull. Now in terms of suspension and handling and body composition, this is wanting a little bit from getting out of the BMW and getting into here. You don't have the adaptive suspension that you get in the BMW, but the damping on this is really nice. It's really comfortable, it's really smooth. Uh, you will feel a little bit of bumps here. It's not gonna be like an air suspension on S-Class, but it shouldn't be, it's a $35,000 car. It's a much better driving and ride experience than you would expect from something at this price point. Now this is front wheel drive, and as a result, you can get a little bit of understeer. All of that 310 pound feet of torque that we'll get to in a minute is going straight to that front axle, and if you push it hard into a corner, you're gonna get a little bit of understeer. Aside from that, if you're not foot flat down on the floor while you're in a turn, the car composes itself really well. The suspension stiffens up uh, and it composes the body really well. This is still a sport-oriented and capable car with a luxury flair. Here we go. A little bit of understeer, not much, not much. And in keeping with that kind of sporty theme, there is one drive mode and it's sport mode. Uh, it doesn't do anything to your suspension. It doesn't really do anything to your steering. It basically just transmits to your gearbox and your gearing. It'll keep you in a lower gear, it'll hang your revs up higher, keep you further into the power band so that if you need to call on some of that torque or that horsepower, you can do so. Mazda 6 speed has been around forever. Uh, they're under the impression that you don't need any more speeds. Personally, I like the ZF8 speed that's in the BMW, but this is still a pretty decent transmission. But you get back into sport and then all of a sudden the powertrain is a little bit quicker to respond, the steering hefts up, the suspension firms up a little bit, and it's just still pretty lively. Ultimately between this and the Mazda, this just feels a little bit smoother, a little bit more comfortable. The adaptive suspension plays a huge part in the ride quality here. Power delivery is just fine, but it's that handling and that soaking up of the bumps that the suspension does that really sets this thing apart from the Mazda. 
Now I do want to talk about powertrain because this is a new powertrain for this Mazda. Uh, it's the first turbocharged engine that we've seen in a Mazda 6. This is the 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder giving you 250 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. Now that is if you put premium gas in it. If you put regular unleaded in, you can to save a little bit of money, but you're gonna sacrifice some of those numbers in performance. And as I mentioned before, the power is pretty good. There's a strong powertrain under the hood here. This turbo is a welcome addition to this powertrain. And if you need to downshift, there's a little bit of lag. The transmission is a little bit lazy at times in comparison to the ZF on that BMW. And there's a little bit of turbo lag, but once it gets spooled up, you really feel it. And it feels really strong. So ultimately, this Mazda 6 culminates in a really, really good bang for your buck sort of feel behind the wheel. It's incredibly composed in terms of the body. The suspension soaks up bumps well, but it's also stiff enough to keep the body composed in a corner. It's got a nice addition with the turbo, giving it a little bit more power, giving it a little bit more strong and athletic and you know substantial feeling. The steering is really nice. Uh, there's a little bit of feedback, not a whole lot, but it's definitely better than some of the other cars that I've tested this year. Overall, it's a lot of bang for your buck behind the wheel of this Mazda 6. Now, as we get to the exterior design, we have to keep in mind of what a luxury sedan typically involves. It's typically more understated, more conservative, but it has a distinctive elegance to it. And the BMW has always been really good at that, especially the 5 Series. It's always been very subtle, very executive. But is the new one getting a little bit too showy? And with the Mazda, this has always been the kind of loud boy racer zoom zoom brand. Does this have too much personality to be luxury? When it's not equipped with the M Sport package, the 5 Series looks pretty subtle. The kidney grills are present and not inflated like they are on some other models. The Angel Eye running lights are still here and they look pretty normal as well. Moving to the profile, it's a car. It's not a tapered roof coupe thing, it's got normal proportions and that's why it's so roomy on the interior. The rear is also a subtle and symmetrical design with dual exhaust. The rear is my favorite angle of the car. It's handsome and understated design that just works. Moving to the Mazda, we have a little more dramatic design, but I think the Kodo design language is much more elevated and elegant than ever before. I love the look of the Mazda 6. The big front grille with the woven pattern is modern and mechanical. The running lights are elegant and interwoven, and the profile, like the BMW, is a true car with a more practical roof line, but that doesn't take away from the aesthetic. Upgraded wheels on my signature trim accent the brilliant sole red paint while the white leather peeks out from inside. The rear, similar to the BMW, uses a symmetrical look with dual exhaust, but in contrast with the front three quarters of the Mazda, the rear just isn't quite as nice. Ultimately, while these sedans have very similar shapes and intents, they go about their design in completely different ways. For me personally, I love this. The Mazda 6 really does it for me, it's just the design that I prefer, but with that we're going to jump into the interiors and see where these cars can really show off. BMW interiors have been stuffed to the gills with technology for the last few years, and what's culminated in is a very contemporary cabin design. Alternatively, the Mazda opts for a more swooping, minimalistic, and elegant design that looks phenomenal in the parchment white. The BMW looks and feels more expensive and is cut from high-grade leathers, metals, and woods. While the design of the Mazda is superior to the BMW, the materials aren't quite on the same level. The Mazda is still incredibly nice, but in the small things like the piano black center console and some of the plastic buttons, it falls just short of the BMW. The tablet style screen on the BMW houses iDrive, which is arguably the best in the business and contains a bunch of features like wireless Apple CarPlay and more. The infotainment system is not only robust, but it's also incredibly quick to respond and the graphics are extremely crisp. It's a very refined system. The infotainment on the Mazda is integrated well into the dash, but it's running in older software and the new Mazda 3 has a new infotainment system. It's still a good system, but it lacks some refinement and has some pixely cameras and stuff. Both the BMW and the Mazda have incredibly comfortable seats and the Mazda offers heated and cooled seats and a heated steering wheel. And again, I love the parchment white and micro suede on the dash. The BMW offers the same things, but can be optioned to include massage seats for those of you with deep pockets. As far as safety systems go, both cars are pretty even, and while the Mazda offers active lane keep assist, the BMW takes it a step further with a steering assist as an option. When it comes to the rear seats, the BMW is a touch bigger and offers a little bit more legroom and headroom, so you can pretty comfortably fit three adults in the back. The Mazda 6 is a little smaller, as Mazdas typically are, but you can still fit two adults back there comfortably and a vertically challenged friend in the middle. So ultimately across the board, I think the Mazda is the little bit better designed car but the BMW goes a little bit further in terms of functionality, practicality, comfort, and luxury with things like all-wheel drive. 
various drive modes, and adaptive suspension. It's just a little bit more luxurious. So this brings us to our $35,000 question. Similarly equipped to the Mazda, BMW is coming in around $62,000. And while it has a more comfortable ride, more intuitive technology, and a higher quality build material, is it really worth almost double the price of the Mazda? To this journalist, the answer is no. That's nothing to take away from the BMW. It's still an amazing car. But I'm just so impressed and amazed with what this Mazda is able to do and be at $35,000. And sure, this Mazda is not perfect. Its technology is lacking a little bit, but you're still getting a gorgeous, comfortable, and luxurious car at that price point. It really kind of is carving out its own segment above the economy and just below luxury. The point of this video was to show you how close this Mazda is getting to things like the BMW that have been defining luxury sedans for years. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave that thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell. That is a huge help to me, guys. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, if you would like to see more content, we have videos here with the BMW M4 taking on the Audi RS5. And we have a video down here with the BMW M3 taking on its little brother, the M340.